Hi, we are the Data Infrastructure Management Group, and uh, by Matthias, me, myself, Alex, Sam, Janun, and Ryan. So our objectives for this internship was to gain some basic Linux skills, such as running through some basic commands, as well as managing our own servers through remote connection. Basically, we use SSH to create direct tunnels into our service. And we also created Linux distance systems for installation and provisioning with Werewolf. And basically what Werewolf is, it's a suite of tools that is used to manage and operate and also create different servers. So to connect to our workspace, we connected from our computers through WireGuard, which effect, uh, effectively functioned as a VPN to allow only us to connect to our servers, which are the Node and the Proxmox servers. The Node being a physical server with the actual server location being in the back corner. And the Proxmox being a virtual machine where we also hosted Werewolf. So before we could actually start working with Werewolf, we had to gain some basic necessary skills, including basic Linux commands, Python and shell scripting, network file systems, how to troubleshoot, notary installation, start and stop services, and also to learn some basic networking procedures. So these are some basic terminologies before you get into some technical stuff. We have SSH, which I explained earlier, just connecting to the Linux workspace wirelessly. We also have NFS, which is an acronym for network file systems. We also have DHCP, which assigns us our IP addresses, which is we which we use in Werewolf. We also use IPXE, which is an open source network boot frame firmware, and TFTP, a protocol that allows us to transfer to and from the remote machines. Okay, so this is an example of a Werewolf workflow. So to make the server run, we have to install and configure a bunch of services, DHCP, TFTP, Werewolf D, and NFS. And so when we boot up the node, it first sends a DHCP request um, to the server, which then it replies, giving the node its IP address as well as the TFTP info. This allows the TFTP to communicate with the node, giving it the IPixie, which is the OS bootloader. This then allows Werewolf D to communicate with the node, giving it the rest of the OS. The rest of the OS is the VNFS image, which is a combination of the container with the OS, as well as overlays that can provide additional configuration. And we also have an NFS, which gives the node its home directories as well as software. And this doesn't have to live on the server itself, but it can also live on a remote location. And as visualized here, we can do the same process for many nodes, for thousands of nodes at one time. And to configure Werewolf, we have to use a command called WWCTL as shown here. And we use it to create and configure the container as well as set the profile and add and configure the node. And to make all these changes save, we have to use a command called WWCTL overlay build. All right, here, this is our um, uh, server, which is the node in this case. And to access our server, we have to access, we have to go on to our web browser, such as uh, Chrome, Edge, whatever you use. And you have to access the BMC. They're just, and those are two examples on the side. You could put in the BMC's uh, IP address or just uh, which which number it is. And it BMC stands for Boot Management Con Control Console. And... Um, uh, what it is, it's like a small little computer that lives on the motherboard of the server, which is like, it's just a small little device on there that you use to connect. And when you get on there, it has all the hardware information of the server, IP address, MAC address, and it also has its own information. So if the server for some reason shuts down, you could still access it remotely and turn it back on or do anything that you need to do to get it working again. And then from there on the BMC, there's a, on the top, there's like a, there's like a little menu that you click on and you it's remote control and you open the terminal, which is an access point to get to the server after you put your username and password in. And then after that, you get onto the server and the server boots up through Werewolf as Janun explained earlier. Okay, so when we boot up the node, we get the disk list node uh, file system, which is showed in the picture over here. So we begin with uh, the command df-h, which shows us what we mounted and uh, what the node is and uh, where what is going on over there. 
And then we have uh, RootFS, which is a virtual file system, and it contains the operating system, and it lives on the RAM of the Werewolf server. And then below that, in the blue section, we have the files which are uh, controlled by necessary file systems, and they are also uh, controlled or live on the RAM. And uh, below that, we have the local disk. Uh, we have a uh, slash dev slash SDA1, which uh, allows for more so, uh, storage for a uh, bigger software. And below that, we have uh, the directories opt and home that are NFS mounted. And we have the two IP addresses that uh, come from or are mounted to the NFS server. And in conclusion, uh, we learned about Linux, shell scripting, Python, networking, and we developed the Werewolf 4 installer. And we would like to acknowledge Ivan Seskar for managing the internship, Jenny Shane for leading the groups, Rudy Jakis for presenting his work, Alexei Katelnikov for being our mentor. He's right here in the front row. Yeah, lift your hand, lift your hand. Yeah, that's more like it. And the rest of the WinLab team for making this such a fabulous experience. Thank you so much.